All right, so it looks like we are good to go. Um, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and check your audio. We're going to be using a lot of the tools in here today, and it would be great if you want to uh, raise your hand to ask questions later if you go ahead and do that verbally. And we are going to be using the cameras for just a little bit as well, so if you want to get that set up but keep it off until you are um, actually needing to use it to ask a question, um, go ahead and get those set up too. And I'm just putting the call-in number in the chat just in case anybody needs that. So um, I just put that in there for y'all. And I just want to welcome you all to the fifth and final webinar of our 2017 IGNIS season. So we're real thrilled and happy to have you join us today. Uh, for those of you that have not attended an IGNIS webinar today or before, um, IGNIS is the Latin word for spark or ignite, and that's exactly what we're hoping to do today is to ignite your curiosity and spark your intellect. This series is brought to you by the Office of E-Learning and Open Education at the Washington State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. And your host today is me, Alyssa Sells. Um, I'm flying solo on hosting today. It's Mark Carbon's birthday. He's my, normally my co-host, but um, he took the day off. So I hope Mark's out doing something fun today. And I will share my contact information with you at the end of the webinar, so if you need to ask me questions about the resources or anything, you'll be able to do that. Our presenters today are Marsha Peterson and Anita Peng, and our topic is how to engage students using web conferencing tools. And I'll just take a moment to um, give a big shout out and a big thank you to Marsha and Anita for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us this afternoon. So thank you for joining us, ladies. Much appreciated. I'll be introducing them in just a second. Um, I'd like to note that um, all of our webinars are captioned, and I'd like to thank ACS Captioning for their services, and they're joining us today. So um, if you'd like to use those captions, you can click on the CC button in the upper left corner of um, your screen. It's kind of toward um, the inner right corner of the audio video panel, but it is toward the upper left of your screen. Or you can use keyboard commands of um, Control or Command plus F8 to open those captions and Control or Command W to close the captioning window if you need to. So um, you'll find a list of the Collaborate keyboard shortcuts located in the Help menu. And let's get you a picture of that. You can expand those in the Help menu. I'm also going to give you a link. I'm just putting that in the chat right now. Um, here's a link to those shortcuts if you would rather look at them in a document form or online. And then also here are um, the Collaborate Accessibility Guidelines for Participants. So if you need any of those, um, they're right there ready for you. So as a reminder, this webinar will be recorded, as they all have been. And you can access those recordings on the ATL blog. And I will go ahead and put that link into the chat for you as well. There you go. And you can see there on the drop-down menu, just find um, the IGNIS section of the blog page. And um, all the recordings are listed out by year. And this recording will be posted in a couple of days. So as soon as I get those up, um, it'll be ready for you. We'll also be posting um, a handout and a few other things um, from the, the uh, webinar. So you'll be able to find the resources and the slides and everything. Uh, we are going to actually be using several of the built-in web conferencing tools today. So um, we're going to start by running through some of those. I'm going to go a little slower than I have been because we're actually going to be using those during the webinar this time. And when I'm done with that, then I'll go ahead and officially introduce uh, Marcia and Anita. And um, as you can see, I do have my webcam on today. Our topic is engaging students online with web conferencing, and using your camera is actually one way to do that. We typically don't use our cameras during the IGNIS webinars because it sometimes slows down our bandwidth. So um, we're going to keep our cameras on for our introductions, and then we will turn those off when we go into the presentation portion um, of the webinar. But please feel free to um, turn your camera on if you would like to raise your hand and verbally ask a question and want to use your camera to do that, we would love to see your smiling faces today. 
All right, so um, we're going to ask that you type comments and questions into the chat as we go. And also, please feel free to raise your hand to ask a question. I will be showing you how to do that in just a minute. So here is um, an image of the meeting interface, just to point out the different parts of it for you. Where you're seeing the slides right now, that is the whiteboard. And we are going to be using some of the whiteboard tools. There's a little toolbar. It's a skinny little thing that runs down the center of the panels. And there's a call out or a larger size of it toward the right of your screen. We are going to use some of those tools today. Um, so do be prepared to find those in the menu and uh, click on them. And we are going to be practicing using them later. So um, I'll just, I'm just using the highlighter right now so you can see what we're going to do. Um, I'm using the third tool down. And um, that was a highlighter tool there. So um, if you want to practice that right now while I'm talking, please feel free to go ahead and do that. There's a highlighter tool. There's also a text box tool um, where you can um, add text in. Also, I'll just um, type my name here real quick. Getting lots of errors. I'm wondering if our um, camera is slowing us down. So you can see there's a couple different ways to add text to your screen. Uh, Anita and um, Marsha are going to lead us in an activity later where they are going to ask you to write on the whiteboard. So this is your chance to practice that before we do our activity. All right, also in the upper left corner is the audio video panel. That's where you see the video from my camera right now. Later when I turn my camera off, you'll just see a picture of me. And um, the cameras follow the speaker, so whoever is speaking the camera will go to that person. In the middle left side, there is a participant panel. You can scroll through there and see who's in attendance today. And then on the bottom left, there's a chat window. And we are going to be asking you to type some answers and do some different things in the chat today. So take a minute to locate that. I'll go ahead and type something in there right now. I'm just saying hi, just so you can see where, where that is. If you want to practice doing that, feel free to um, go ahead and do that now. All right, here are some of the other participant tools that we're going to be using. If you um, will look and find the emoticon icon, it looks like a happy face. Later on, you might be asked to answer a question by putting a smiley face by clicking that. Um, and you can see if you're looking at the top of the participant panel, um, there's a smiley face by my name right now. Um, also, if you go over a little to your right there, there is a hand that you can raise. We are going to also be using that feature. So if everybody could just practice right now um, using um, raising their hand and also um, adding smiley faces because we are going to use these later. That looks great. And as you raise your hands, you are put into numbered order. And that's how we know what order to call on you in. But we are actually going to use that um, for some question answering today. So great job, everyone. All right, if you'll go ahead and um, clear your um, hand raise, you can do that. Um, yep, there you go. Good job. That saves me the time of having to clear it for everybody. All right, um, if you want to talk later when you raise your hand, there's a talk button up in that audio video panel. And um, when you're speaking, please have your talk button on or we won't be able to hear you. And then we do ask that you keep yourself muted during the web conference. So um, please make sure that your talk button is off unless you're actually asking a question. All right, um, let's see, moving on. Oh, whoops, I forgot one. Uh, we do have a polling tool in here also, and everybody can give that a practice right now as well. Um, it has a yes, no on it right now. I'm actually going to be changing that to be a letter answer. So if you want to go ahead and practice that, go ahead and um, give that a try, because we are going to be using that one as well. OK, I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And then I think I'm ready to do my introductions. So let's start with Marsha, because she's first there on the left. Um, Marsha Peterson is tenured faculty at Bellingham Technical College in the Business and Computer Informations Department. And she's teaching English, Communication Studies, uh, Business Math, and Microsoft Office courses on campus. She also teaches online, and she teaches hybrid classes as well. 
She's earned both her Bachelor of Science and Master of Education degrees from Central Washington University. I went there too, so go CWU. Um, and Marcia has completed four Quality Matters courses, including um, the peer review view course, so that's awesome. Good job, Marcia. Uh, Marcia is a member of the Business Education Association, uh, Washington Association of Career and Technical Education, International Association of Administrative Professionals, and is also currently in a leadership position as um, the membership chair for the Washington State Business Education Association. So I'm guessing Marcia's pretty busy, because that is a a lot of stuff to participate in. And then she also serves on BTC's Instruction Council and in um, one of their faculty learning communities. And then um, in addition to her career as a teacher, Marsha has worked as a receptionist, a legal secretary, an athletic program manager, a clerical testing administrator, a lifeguard, and even as a juvenile detention officer. So wow, that's um, a really <laughs> diverse um, set of experiences there. Maybe you'll share a little bit more about that when you introduce yourself, Marcia. And then outside of education, Marcia enjoys traveling. She likes scuba diving, reading, and volunteering with search and rescue. rescue. And then she also likes spending time with her family. And she has two-legged and four-legged family. So um, thanks for joining us today, Marcia. All right, um, Anita. Anita Pang, she has um, graduated with honors and received her Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics and a Master of Science degree in Mathematics Education from Pensacola Christian College. That's quite an accomplishment. She has over 16 years of experience teaching mathematics courses, and um, those have ranged from developmental mathematics through upper level mathematics. And um, she's also taught at the college preparatory level, honors level, and um, AP or advanced placement level. So wow, that's, um, that's a lot of math. She was a multiple honoree of who's who among America's teachers. And she was most recently honored to be the Teacher of the Year prior to relocating to Bellingham in June 2015. So maybe she'll tell us a little bit more about that in just a minute. Um, Anita is also a certified Quality Matters peer reviewer. And um, Anita and her husband have two young school-aged children. And as a family, they love to travel. They love to sightsee, and they also enjoy authentic cuisine. So that sounds real interesting. All right, ladies, I'm going to turn it over to you, and um, you guys can take it away from here. OK. Can you hear me? <laughs> sure can. We got you. Okay. I'm going to reset your timer. I'm sorry I went over a little into your time. That's OK. But I think we've got plenty of time, so you're good. And the ladies asked for you to um, go ahead and ask questions as they were speaking. So if you do have a thought or comment, please put those into the chat, and then we will um, get to those as soon as we can. All right, go ahead. OK. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm Anita. Marcia. All right. Uh, we are rookies in Blackboard, OK? So uh, and have never done a statewide <laughs> on presentation, so please forgive our uh, Nervousness? I'm nervous. I don't know about Marcia. <laughs> now, please do not hesitate to interrupt us anytime uh, with, with questions. And, and I think we are ready to turn off our camera. We are nervous to see ourselves there. <laughs> oh, give us a wave first. <laughs> right. okay. And ladies, um, would you make sure to sit real close to your microphone um, so that we can hear you? Anita, you were a little bit soft. OK. I will speak louder. Ah, that's much better. Thank you. OK. Okay. All right, ready? Okay. Okay, now uh, please raise your hand to answer yes um, if you have participated in any interactive web conference prior to today. We'll see who. We don't see the. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Excellent. So quite a few people who have been participating in, in conferences before, and that's good to know. Um, if this is uh, your first time, and as we're going through here, if you have questions, please feel free to ask and, and go ahead and put those in the chat, because we would be happy to address them. And go ahead and lower your hands. And all right. And um, Alyssa, we were hesitating there for a second, because we keep getting a pop-up that says we're losing connection. So. Hopefully that's okay. We just keep canceling it. Yeah, 
you're fine. It, it's um, for the for Anne for um, she's the writer doing our captions for us, so we're good. Oh, okay, okay, excellent. Thanks. All right, okay. So uh, before we actually get into the the main piece of what we we're talking today, we wanted to just give you a little background of kind of why we're doing this. Um, so we both work at Bellingham Technical College, and BTC is located in Bellingham, Washington, and we have about 2,000 FTE, uh, about 35 associate degrees, and we also have certificates and DTAs and a Bachelor's of Applied Science program. And our students, 72% um, of our programs are workforce programs, and our average age of students is around 32. So we have kind of maybe a different makeup than um, maybe some other schools in the area. Um, one of the, the things that BTC, I think, does really well is they really encourage staff to work together. And um, our fearless e-learning leader uh, created a group this year called our faculty learning community. Um, and our focus really was to look at online teaching. So you can kind of see on the screen there that at BTC, we still have most of our classes as face-to-face, -face, uh, but we are increasing our online offerings and our hybrid offerings. Um, and so our FLC, our separate committee, our focus really was to take a look at our online classes. And um, I joined the committee because I really don't like teaching online. <laughs> and so, but I thought if I have to do it, I want to do it well. And it's, I've really learned a lot through our committee and through some of our other trainings that we've had. And so our committee was really looking at how can online teaching be better. And um, as a part of our group, we um, did a survey of students who take online classes, and then we actually did a focus group, or a couple focus groups, where we brought the students in and asked them some questions. And so Anita's going to share with you now some of the statistics from that survey. Okay, from the materials, um, how engaging have you found? Okay, we have three topics that are of our interest here. Um, how engaging have you found the majority of the learning materials in your online or hybrid courses? And I'm going to highlight the the largest portion of the pie chart. I'm a math mathematician here, so I'm looking at the ch chart. Uh, 41 out of 89 res um, students say that it's engaging. And then the next one will be how engaging our let me see uh, uh, the the learning activities. Okay, and 48 out of 88 um, found it engaging. And then lastly is the one that, um, how, is, how important is it to you that you interact with your instructor in an online class? Out of 88 responses, 45 says it's very important. So um, I think this is an eye-opening to me, like, oh, wow, you know, this is so, <laughs> um, I, I need to make my courses, I'm making more engaging, more, more reaching out to them. Uh, and that's why I'm interested in in leading, or not leading it, participate in this web conferencing because I want to share uh, what I found. It, one way that I can engage my students through virtual assistants, and then Marcia is going to talk about uh, how you engage your students in the synchronous activities. Uh, we, right. we do so have the, a question the, for you in the chat oh, already. Yeah. If you want to stop and answer a question, sure. Earl at Pierce asks, "Do you use Canvas for your grounded course to web enhance them?" Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, actually, uh, we use Canvas at BTC, so then you'll see you'll see later how we use Canvas to engage our students. Yes, and I use uh, what I found to do too is among a lot of my courses I teach both online and on campus, different quarters. And so when I made all my online videos for my online classes, I thought, well, why not post them for my on campus as well? And so I found that my classes. Um, look very similar, whether they're online or on campus, as far as how I use Canvas. Great, thanks. So now, it's my turn again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, uh, I use virtual office hours um, as, uh, as a way to engage my students. Um, this is the first time uh, I did office hours virtually. The, the benefits are uh, office hours do not have to take place on campus. I can do it at home, I can do it in my office. And then uh, office hours can take place at more popular times, such as later in the evening, when more students are likely can, can attend. Uh, additionally, students can also pop online when they're actually working on homework and ask a quick question and then go back to, to do um, their homework. Also, there's a way in Canvas that uh, you can archive the discussions so, so students can go back to the conversation if they need clarification or want to review the material again. And then students who did not participate can always open that discussion and 
supply and uh, have the same access to the material. Uh, another, another uh, more benefits are uh, we can cut down on having to reply to multiple emails with the same question. You know how it's like a repetition, right? And then it also also assures students of a timely response. Uh, they can all be active participants uh, instead of waiting in a line outside your office door. Um, also, anonymity. You know, I'm a shy student too, so shy, shy students might be more pr prone to participate. Like I, we turn off our camera and now. I can be more active, right? Because you cannot see me. Uh, we can also do. Uh, I mean, the, the shy students um, are likely to, to participate when they are, when they don't see you, they don't uh, hear your voice. Uh, another thing is. It offers the whole class as a chance to see what types of questions individual students are asking. I have a question, Anita. Yes, ma'am. Do you record your office hours and then post them? If there are, there are students actually asking questions, I, I enable the recording. Uh, but if there's nobody there, okay, I'm sitting here and waiting, and I don't. <laughs> right. That's a good question, Marcia. Yeah. Well, do you have any any questions so far from the participants? I don't see anything additional in the Not chat yet. just okay. yet, but I did put the source of your information in there for anybody. There's a link there if you want to go and look at that yep, information. Yeah, I, I got it from there. Good. Thank you, yeah. Lisa. Now, the methods. Um, well, step one, you got to choose a tool that best suits your needs. In this case, I choose what was already in Canvas, which is the big blue button. Again, I'll talk about it later. Uh, if you need any support, I am pretty sure your e-learning department will be very helpful to help you to support you in this area. And in step two, you get a set a day and a time you can be available online. Um, again, evening is a popular time, but I, my evening is mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I choose Tuesday and Thursday in the afternoon, uh, one thirty to two thirty. And actually, I should have my office hour right now, but I'm doing this <laughs> now. But but make sure you announce the time. You know when you're gonna be online. Um, instructions and also instructions for connecting to the online platform. And, and in the beginning, um, again, this is all new to me, and I, I bet it's, it's new to most students here. Uh, they, I think they, they, there's a reason they, they take online class because they do not want to see the instructor, right? Or the instructor to see them. So, so in the beginning, I have to invite them. Okay, you know, uh, this is this is I have a virtual office hours, and then you might want to watch this little video tutorials how to connect with me on Canvas. And then step three, we'll just connect with them, uh, connect with the students. And uh, then the next thing is, no, okay, here's the Canvas tools that I use. Canvas uh, is the learning management system that we use at BTC. Um, I use conferences um, that, again, it's in, embedded on Canvas, okay, that allows you to upload files, access to a digital whiteboard, which is similar to Blackboard, and you, you have an uh, experience to to experiment with the digital whiteboard, also as a video and audio. Again, it's similar to Blackboard, like what you're doing right now. And then the scheduler is also part of the calendar in Canvas. Uh, I haven't done this, I haven't used this tool yet, but I, th I plan I plan to use it. Apparently, Marcia has it, has used it. And, and then I also use chat. Um, uh, again, you know, I, I'm on the go all the time. I think it's, it's assuring to my students, you know, the, the instructor is always there. I'm I'm okay. The students um, message me like at night. You know, I always I try to respond as as, as soon as possible. Again, it, it's always a surprise to them. Wow, you know, I never get a response so quickly from my instructor. You know, it, it's a good thing. That's a way to engage them. You know, I'm there for you. Uh, taking online classes is not easy, so I I, I want to show my support that you know I'm here to support them. And then one other tool that I use is discussions. It's like a forum uh, when students can pose a question and then. Everybody who, who who look at the discussion can see what ki kind of questions. Um, anything else? Oh, that, okay, that's Canvas tools. But there are some other tools um, out there, such as Yarn. I never use Yarn. Adobe Connect and Microsoft Skype for Business. I'm using it now with my colleagues. Again, it's like a way to chat. And I've, I've done with my personal Skype Skype account. Um, but I realize not many students have a Skype or somehow. I mean, Canvas is already there, so why not we use, use it? And Google Hangouts now is more like a social ma media, right? Google Hangouts and then Skype and join me, Jive, Jive Chime. I know there's another one called Zoom and GoToMeeting. Yeah, so Marsha have uh, have used GoToMeeting and Zoom. Just yeah. GoToMeeting. Just GoToMeeting. Okay, now as for math and science, well, I'm a math instructor. Um, how how do you actually you know sh um, 
hold your virtual office hours. So this is me using the big blue button. It's a screenshot of, um, again, it looks like a like blackboard, right? You have a webcam on the left side. You have a digital whiteboard in the middle and then some chatting. Again, you can always move these windows around. Uh, I've, the first time I learned how to use this is through my through the faculty learning community. So again, that's one interest. One 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 reason I joined the the faculty learning community. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, so for this for this uh, platform that I use, just like you guys, you don't have to have a webcam, right? You can just listen to me and talking all the time here. Um, and then. And then uh, you have the option to join. You have the option to actually turn on your webcam or, or your, your. let me see, we have a license. Oh, okay. Uh, so again, as you're the participant, have the option to turn on your webcam, turn on your microphone if you have any questions. Um, again, in the beginning, I feel like students are not used to this. I, I, didn't, know used to, I didn't know about this tool in the beginning too. So I, I, in the beginning I said, okay, guys, this is just like a FaceTime. You know, if you have iPhone, you can just, you know, con just turn on your webcam and we can talk. We have a real, real uh, uh, live, what do you call it, live, um, conversation. live conversation. Thank you. Live conversation. And it's more natural than the email back and forth. Correct. Correct. And then, uh, thank you. And then when they're, the, when you're working on, so I, I'm talking to my students here, you know, when you're working on a math assignment and you know that your instructor is live, why not just you know, turn on your webcam and ask, ask questions, you know? So, um, uh, and also the, when, when I know there's a student, and then this is answering Marsha's question, if there's a student actually ask questions, that's when I enable recording. And then they can, anybody else can see, can see the, can see, can hear the recording and, uh, you you you'll do some uh, a little exercise after this. Let me see. What's the next thing? Yeah. Okay. Now okay, there you go. Now I'm gonna engage you. We have a one million dollar question here. Are you ready? <laughs> what theorem is it that will help us find the length of a hypotenuse given two sides of a right triangle? I want you, I want my participants here to write your answers in the chat area. And you get extra points if you spell it right. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Anita's the only one that can spell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see who's the only English. <laughs> funny, funny. Give it a try. Do you need a hint? I knew the equation, but I didn't know the name of the theorem. <laughs> oh, no, it's math. They're, you're asking them to do math, <laughs> Anita. I don't think we primed them enough. We oh, forgot no. to tell them they yeah, had to math. do math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a nasty one right there. <laughs> okay, let me give you a hint. Ooh, I could do that part. I just didn't know what it was called. Good job, Leo. Hey, there we there go. Is well, somebody guys, somebody give it is. fast. <laughs> it is the Pythagorean theorem. Good job. And we have the one, we have the winner here. <laughs> Pythagorean theorem, yes. And Sherry also, it is correct, but it's just not the right spelling. <laughs> it's okay. Good job. I mean, see, uh, you're participating. Good. Now, but as a, uh, I have a problem. Okay, how would you explain how to use a theorem or any math equations? You know, it's hard to, to me, it's hard to, to just have a mouth and a trackpad to 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 explain these kind of concepts. <laughs> okay. So now uh, I want you to draw or write something on the on the next slide here with your mouse or trackpad. And then Alisa is going to help me to, again, to review how the, the writing tool in Blackboard here. Um, you can write your name or anything you want or draw something here with a mouse or trackpad only. Yep, just go ahead. Anything and, school appropriate. Yep, go ahead and find that little skinny toolbar there. And um, probably the third one down is the easiest one to use. Just click on it, and then you kind of hold it and draw with it, drag and draw. So. Um, and you'll also get an option to um, change the weight of it. There's a little mm -hmm. menu that pops up at the bottom, and you can um, make it thicker, littler. So um, Alyssa, earlier in the chat box, um, Caleb had asked about if uh, JAWS, uh, if the whiteboard was JAWS compatible. And I thought maybe that was a better question for you. Do you are you familiar with JAWS and how it works with Blackboard? 
Um, I'm not super familiar with JAWS, um, but I'm thinking that um, the whiteboard probably is not JAWS compatible because the whiteboard is image based, would be my guess. So I'm going to say that it's probably not, and that if you had a student who needed to use a screen reader, um, you might want to investigate some other options just to see what else might be available. But um, we could. Um, definitely do some checking and find an answer to that. I Probably not during the webinar, but... Um. So Bill just wrote in the chat box, hey Bill, do you want to turn your mic on? Maybe you can answer that question. Bill was our presenter last week. Hey Bill. Hi. I'm actually the one who was asking the question. It wasn't Kate. Oh, I thought it was Kate. <laughs> Good job. Way to stump us. <laughs> I believe I found a way, but I'll get back to you all on that. Okay. okay. I'm just not Thank sure you. how a screen reader would read scribbles. I think maybe it might read it like if you were typing into a text box, it might be able to read it. But if you're using like the highlighter tool, like a lot of us are doing right now, I don't think the screen reader would pick that up. That's just my two cents at guessing at it. We we were thinking more of the slideshow actually, not the the whiteboard. Oh, the slideshow. Yeah. Okay. I actually thought you were talking, Bill, about being able to draw on the whiteboard using the keyboard with JAWS. So, okay. That would be great to find out. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun. Okay. Uh, thank you for your participants, uh, participation there. Uh, can you imagine how I'm going to explain math equation or concepts on a digital <laughs> whiteboard with the mouse? Uh, so, somebody, actually it was Jane Bloom, who gave me an idea. And it, my e-learning too. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to change the slide, okay, guys? <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> okay, now, all right, here you go. So, uh, uh, to solve my problem, I, I I have to use some kind of document camera. So, in, I'm taking pictures here of the document camera. A any document camera, this is the one we have at PTC, and then we can be creative. We use a webcam and then put it on the mount there and and then uh, face it to the whiteboard. They can actually see me too explaining the explaining the the, the math concepts. And then uh, if you have your own uh, device, such as iPad or iPhone, you can also use that. And then again, your e-learning will will be happy to support you in that uh, purchasing those uh, uh, devices or tools. And then uh, one other math instructor, uh, Callan Ring, is also using uh, uh, is also utilizing. The virtual office hours. Um, so I was happy to see him doing that too. Oh wow, you know, Kellen, can I take a picture? So that's him there. <laughs> He's using Elmo, which is more expensive dark ca camera, and he has a whiteboard, uh, and he can just um, explain the, the the math equation, the concept, or drawing on the whiteboard while the camera is facing down the, to the to the, the the whiteboard. So that that's what uh, he and I are are doing with our virtual office hours. Um, do you have any questions up to this up to this point before I turn it over to my colleague? Oh yeah, good. Yes, Microsoft Surface. Yep, and I actually have iPad, and this is something that I I'm also a rookie, so I'm I'm looking for the different ways that I can make it more efficient and not going going to use uh, expensive tools and maybe I break it, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so again, I'm learning stuff. I'm using I ha I have my iPad Pro, so I just need to experiment more with these kind of tools, online tools. Very good comment, David. Any questions of Anita? Nope. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, we'll move on. Feel free to, to ask if you have any questions. All right. So we have another poll. So earlier we asked you if you had been part of a conference, but now I'm asking you, have you ever led one? So have you been the moderator, um, the speaker? Um, and so go ahead in your um, poll responses there um, should have options A, B, C, D, E. It sure does. Just go and ahead and use that polling yeah. tool to answer and then we'll publish those um, results to the whiteboard here in just a minute. So we let the not sure in there because, you know, sometimes we've done stuff in the past and you're just not sure if you were the one running it or not. <laughs> All right, looks like we've got um, a lot of participation, so I'm going to go ahead and publish those for you so you can see the percentages. There we go. Ah, oh, was it? Deep? Right. Okay, so a few people have done quite a few of them, and a number of people, those said no, right? 
So interesting. So hopefully you'll find some of this valuable. Um, I've really uh, used web conferencing a lot in my classes, and so um, I, I've definitely had some struggles along the way, but I think it's been definitely good for my classes. And Bill, yes, you did a great job last week. We watched you. Um, all right, so moving to the next question, Dan. Um, so you've been a participant in web conferencing or you've run a web conference, and so you can anticipate what um, these questions are going to be, but the advantages and disadvantages of web conferencing, um, what are they? So on the slide in front of you, and then let's see, do we have two? Oh, I see. It's just switched around. So this one is, what are the disadvantages of web conferencing? So what are the things that that make it difficult or not a good tool to use. So go ahead and just in the chat box, just key in something. Doesn't have to be complete sentences. Yep. Shy participants. Yep. I need to refer to that. Technology for sure. Let's see what <laughs> frustrations. Ah, the mood. Ah, the nonverbal cues. Right, which is why I make them use their webcam. Engagement, depending on the group, yep. Connections for sure. Um, so definitely the the um, the biggest issue I found is the equipment. Um, the other issue I found with my online classes is when are these going to take place? Because online students don't necessarily sign up to be you know eight to five or you know like Anita was talking about she does her office hours sometimes in the evening. So I found that when I set up my web conferences with my students, I have to kind of hit all times a day and also all days a week. I have students that work Monday through Friday and they do all their homework on the weekend. So the timing is a challenge. Um, so we definitely know there are some challenges, but we also know there are some benefits. So go ahead and uh, key in what you think kind of are the the biggest advantages to having a web conference with students instead of just maybe an email exchange. Uh, right, connect to certain students. Ah, adult students, good. Flexibility for sure, we heard that a lot in our focus groups. Yeah, the human factor is big, especially that webcam. Yep, definitely. We, yeah, Whatcom County, we, our students drive a long ways to get here, so yeah, if they can save that trip in. Yep, excellent. Good, good input. So I use web conferencing primarily in my technical communications course. So that course is taken by our business students who are in administrative assistant programs, computer software support, and accounting. And those students are going to go into careers where they're probably going to either be a participant or be the moderator for a web conference. And so I want them to get over it, right? I want them to see that it's not as terrible as maybe it sounds. And so that's the purpose of having it in our course. Um, I even do it for my online class, or excuse me, my on-campus class. So they have to participate in an online web conference as well because it is a skill in our department. Um, so the, the first step is the scheduling, and that is the most difficult part. And so <laughs> Anita's messing with my keyboard here. <laughs> so the scheduling is hard. Um, what I think is the most important, and I, I have another document with a lot of these details that um, I'm welcome to or willing to send you, but the scheduling part um, for me is that when is it going to happen, and also you need to make sure that you follow institution policies. Um, that there's going to be some synchronous class time. So I make sure that that's in my course description. Um, also, when I schedule my conferences, I schedule them for small groups. Um, you know, a group of our size today, if we all had our webcams going, not only would the system probably flip out, but it's just hard to manage that many people. And I really want my students to have a discussion, so I try to limit my groups to three to five students. Um, and then, as Anita mentioned before, I do use um, either our scheduler or I use a program called Doodle that uh, helps me schedule my students when it's convenient for them. Uh, and then uh, I have a lecture that I post, of course, in my modules in my Canvas course that shows them how to use the software. We also have some videos that are built into Canvas for that as well. And then as part of my lecture, I also teach them how to participate in a conference. So Alyssa earlier talked about muting your mic when you're not talking and um, 
making sure your webcam is directed at your face and not other <laughs> parts of your body. And so it's just a lecture that guides them through how to participate in a conference. And that lecture is also included in the extra materials that I can send you as well. Um, and then uh, the next thing I do is we talk about equipment needs. And so I want to make sure my students have the equipment. I don't expect that they would have purchased it for the course. Uh, luckily, our library is awesome, and they have all the equipment my students need. So if students don't have a webcam, if they don't have a headset, um, they can come get those at our library. So typically, that's not an issue. Um, they either have it, or they can easily get it from our school. All right, so a uh, little poll here. So you have to read questions carefully before you actually respond. So I want to have you use the hand tool to raise your hand for yes to this question, or you're going to use the smile icon if your answer is yes and you like it. And the question is, do you typically use your webcam during a web conference? So if you participate in a web conference and the webcam is optional, do you actually use yours? So go ahead and either raise your hand or do the smile. I can't tell. I'm looking at them coming in. Are you in the chat? I didn't see a smile. I don't. So, Alyssa, how can we tell? A smile. Oh, wait, never mind. Earl smiled. Oh, Yay. Okay, you can okay, see okay, it in the participant that. panel. It'll either have a yeah. hand raise or a smiley face under their name. I wasn't seeing many smiles, so I was thinking it wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I'm also a member of some statewide organizations. And luckily, we do a lot of our conferencing online, because it saves a whole lot of money for the group. And very few of our uh, committee members use their webcam. And I wish they would. I think having the webcam on, uh, it it kind of manages us. So right now, it's very likely that some of you are multitasking because we're not watching you. And it's easy to do that. I know I've done a lot of multitasking during web conferences. And, um, and yes, I agree with you, Alyssa, the smaller meeting for sure. Uh, but I think that when somebody's speaking, and I have my webcam on, and I'm looking at the screen, I feel like they think I'm really looking at them. So I, I think the having the camera on is valuable in a number of ways. And who's laughing? Somebody's been on the webcam. Oh, somebody's got oh. their camera on. Oh, great. Excellent. But I, I know, it, and that for a lot of folks, that's kind of a, a something they don't want to do. And, and a lot of the meetings I participate in for committee work, it's on like a Saturday morning. People haven't had a shower yet, so I get it. But I really do think it kind of keeps us in check a little bit. So, all right. All right. So um, because I know the camera issue can be kind of nerve ragging, um, I have a camera assignment. So I use our um, Canvas tool of the, our discussion board. And I have students have to do a video discussion uh, participation. And I try to make it fun and light. And so I usually have them like introduce themselves and say something personal. And I usually do a demo where I show them, you know, here's one dog and here's the other dog and, you know, just something fun. And this last quarter, I actually had them ask a question of the rest of the group. And then the discussion then was everybody responding to everybody's questions. And I did this with my on-campus class as well this year. And what I noticed is the next time they all walked into the room, there were more casual conversations with people that didn't normally talk to each other. So that was kind of cool. So the camera practice, I think, is a big thing. Um, student content is huge. So students are going to be really nervous participating in a web conference. And I make them talk. And I, they have to talk for about a minute. And so I have them prepare what they're going to say ahead of time. They turn it in. I read it. I grade it. So they already know that what they're going to share is good. So there's no fear that they're going to share the wrong content. And I even let them read it if they want to, um, but they don't have to. But they do have to talk for a minute, and they know that up front. Um, so then I send out a message reminder just to make sure that everybody remembers we're meeting. And then I go ahead and create the conference um, so that they can see it when they go to log in. All right. Um, oh, and by the way, thanks, Janelle, for taking that picture. Um, so actually running the conference, uh, the setup, uh, Anita kind of walked you through Big Blue Button so you can see on my screen how I kind of rearranged the Big Blue Button screen. 
Um, let's see, somebody said, are am I using the inline media comments tool in Canvas? Uh, I don't know. It's in the discussion yeah, board. It's the media okay. button. I just wondered if it was the is one in it? the rich content editor, if that's how you were having uh, students record uh, their um, assignment. I don't know. Don, can you answer that? Yes, media tool. Okay. Oh, yep, Don, I'm I just thought the audience <laughs> might like to know <laughs> what you were right, doing. Right, right, right. Right, it was just whatever's built into our system, so. Right. Um, the one thing that I do is my students log in is as soon as they see their mics on, I welcome them to the to the conference. And then once everybody's logged in, I help them with their webcams. And then we do a screen tour, very similar to what Alyssa did at the beginning here, just so they can see all the tools. The only thing that I do differently, um, I because we have a small group, is that I actually hand over moderator controls to each student so that they can kind of see what it's like to, what the screen's gonna look like when they're in control. Because because later in the quarter, I have them give a presentation where they are in control. And so they get that opportunity to try that. And then the students actually then deliver their, in, uh, their research that they've already um, written up. And after each student's presentation, then I open it up for questions for all the other students to talk to them. And that's kind of fun to see who's willing to, to speak when they don't have to. And then we uh, conclude the conference and make sure that everybody knows how to log off. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention too, and Alyssa does a good job of this, is making sure that everybody knows that the uh, conference is being recorded. So I make that statement at the beginning as well. All right, so I am curious, because I want to steal your ideas. What else can we do for people who are new to web conferencing to get them comfortable? Right, so I mentioned I had the camera practice. Right? I mentioned that I had them do the research ahead of time. But I'm curious if you've done anything or heard of anything that people have done to make people more comfortable. So go ahead and throw that in the chat if you have any ideas, because I would love to steal them. I'll go ahead and give you one idea verbally while other people Ooh, are typing into the chat. Um, one thing we've done with the Ignis webinars is we've dedicated a single room to Ignis and we leave it open 24-7 so anybody can go in uh, and practice their connection and do, um, you know, just kind of investigate and look at the, the interface, you know, anytime they want to. And that's also mentioned in the little um, email promotion things that I send out that um, it's open 24-7 for people to come in and practice. So that's one thing I do. Yep, that's excellent. And our uh, the big blue button that we use here at BTC uh, within Canvas has that ability that students can create their own conferences. And so, yeah, that would be great to, to have them actually go in and create it and practice it on their own. There, there's not really a way for me to just open a live one, but I like that idea. All right. Oh, and the practice assignment. Cool. All right. So looking at our clock here, so we'll kind of jump to the next part. Um, so after the conference is over, I uh, send everybody a message, kind of just giving them props for, you know, being good troopers and, and participating um, and try to give them some good feedback. Uh, one of the things that I probably have to comment most is the muting the mic and also paying attention. Um, so sometimes I'll have students that I they're starting to get um, off uh, track and I can tell they're multitasking and so I'll just chat message them saying I am watching you so because they put their <laughs> webcam on. Um, one of the other things that I've done sometimes in the past is for those students who just are too too afraid to participate sometimes I'll give partial points if they go back and watch one of the recordings and then do kind of an analysis of it. Um, but that's optional obviously. So once my students have done the web conference uh, with our um, main assignment, then I have a group assignment that follows that uh, activity and I, I usually let them choose to use the web conferencing tool if they want to, but many of them end up doing that. Um, and then they can actually create it, they can schedule it themselves and, oops, oops uh oh, sorry. There we go. Um, and then I could actually participate in those conferences, but I don't have to, um, but that is an option. Um, and then the final way that I use web conferencing in my classes is by uh, is for our oral presentations. So in our technical communications class, students have to give a formal presentation. And I didn't like in the past when my students would record a video and upload it um, because the quality of the videos were pretty, um, 
varied and the tools that they had weren't always very good. So we now do our oral presentations using Big Blue Button. Again, I've used groups of three to five and they give their formal presentation. They usually have a PowerPoint that we upload similar to what we're doing today. Um, and what I have found is that my online and on-campus classes both have the option to present online or on-campus. So whether the class is online or on-campus, they can use choose the method that works best for them. And so last quarter, my class was online, and I had six students that wanted to present on campus. And this quarter, my class is on campus, and I have about six students who want to present online. And so it, it just depends on their comfort level um, and also their scheduling as well. So I like to have that option. But again, smaller groups is important. Um, also, I let them know that they can't have anything fancy. It's not going to work. Um, they can't have any video clips animations aren't going to work, um, and that it will be recorded. So uh, that's kind of how I use that piece. Okay, at this point, do you have any questions for us? If you cannot think of any questions, we can always reach out, um, reach out to us uh, at this email address. Go ahead and raise your hand to ask questions or type your questions and comments into the chat if you have them. Thanks, Janelle. Janelle took the pictures, so I have to give her credit. I'm curious, um, you know, what people have used web conferencing for, either for instruction or for other activities. Like I said, I use GoToMeeting in a lot of the groups that I'm a member of. Uh, ooh, that's a Dawn question. Dawn, can you answer the question about Big Blue Button? Don is our e-learning director and is sitting in the other room. That's okay. I can go ahead and answer it. Um, Big Blue Button is a conferencing tool that's built into Canvas, so everybody does have access to that free version of it. Mm -hmm. Right now, we also have so Collaborate integrated into Canvas, but our Collaborate um, contract is going to be ending at the end of June, so actually next year we'll probably be using either Zoom or WebEx. Ah, okay. And I have not used Zoom, but I'm sure that a lot of the features are similar. It's super easy. Yeah. It's very similar. Oh, okay. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> All right. So, oops, oops, sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's, I was taking it to the edge. Whoops. So, that, um, were you engaged throughout our, our <laughs> session here? <laughs> that should have been our final poll. How engaged were you? Thanks, I think Bill. we must have missed a slide. Sorry about that, ladies. Yeah. No, we're good. We didn't have a poll. I was just oh, saying. you didn't we have, 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 we have, should have okay. had a poll. I was like, oh, no, I accidentally no, deleted no, one of your pages. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so timely. Oh, look at good that. Good job. Good All right. Yeah, we'll say our final goodbye. That is the last time we say <laughs> Yeah, and I will just take a minute to close us out here. So um, thank you to both Marcia and Anita. That was fantastic. I think um, from the <laughs> comments I'm seeing that the audience enjoyed it. Um, here's my contact information, too, just in case you have questions about how to find recordings or anything else. Um, we will be taking the recordings out of Collaborate because our contract is ending, so we will be pulling those out as MP4s, and they will be captioned and re-uploaded, but I don't have all of that worked out yet. Um, planning to put them still back in the same place on the ATL blog, so um, you will have access to the recordings after our Collaborate uh, contract ends, just in case you were curious. And then I don't have another one to introduce because this was our fifth and final for this year, so I do appreciate everyone who were diehard participants and joined us for almost all of these. And if you were just coming for this one, um, I do thank you for attending today as well. And um, 
Just a note there that all of our content is licensed with a Creative Commons attribution, so please feel free to take it, use it, remix it, share it, whatever you'd like to do with it. Um, we want you to, to go ahead and um, make use of that um, to your best advantage. So thank you, everyone. Um, any final comments, ladies or audience? Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera or the recording off. And um, if you have other questions or anything, feel free to hang out for a minute. We'll be here.